So we now have one. And then we're going to select on Harry. You can also use, aside from using the tools that you have on the toolbar or sliding this for the edit overlays, you can also use um, F9, function F9 to insert the clip on the timeline. And then here, same here, so you can just insert or here. And then you can also select multiple clips here and then select on insert. So the next thing that we will do is we're going to do some jump cuts. So here, you can select on slip. So you can use your blade tool or just by simply clicking on letter B on the keyboard. And then you can see the blue markers. So you just have to cut. And then A for selection tool, or you just you can use your mouse and then just select the selection here, select backspace. So this one will leave a gap. To be able to delete that, you just select and then select on delete. Another way would be let's select again our blade. So this one, okay, here. And here and then we just have to select again and then just select on shift delete just to delete it without leaving a gap a brain child for so long and then it was like right, we're gonna have to birth this thing we birthed it in January this year so we've been together for about just under a year now um, in the public realm before yeah. that we okay so if you want to delete just the audio file or just the video file because for example the cutaways that we have added what you can do is you, you're going to select but you have to make sure that this one would be unlinked so the link selection will connect your video and your audio so you just have to unlink them so that you can just select the audio or what you can do if this one is still selected, you can just press Alt. So this one will bypass your um, link selection. So you just have to select here and then delete. So now we're just going to use the video. Another option for this is, for example, remember um, on this clip, for example, you can see that there's a video here and an audio. So if you just want to use the video file, you just have to click on this one and then drag it on your timeline. If you just want to use the audio, you just have to do the same thing. But yeah, so another, so there are um, multiple ways of doing um, things in DaVinci Resolve. So the editing part, so we all know that DaVinci Resolve, the strength of it is in the color grading part or the color page. But um, when it comes to editing, um, I can say that you just edit your project in DaVinci Resolve just like how you're going to edit it in Premiere. You just have to import your files and then you do your timeline or you create your timeline or your story. And then you just have to familiarize the tools available inside DaVinci Resolve and then eventually you'll be able to get a hang of it and then work your project without the need of moving from one software to DaVinci and move back again. Okay. 
So I'm going to add, um, so what we're going to do, the drum cut here. So we're going to hide the drum cut. So what we're going to do is I'm going to add another clip. Just this clip here. So I just have to cut and chop that here. Um, before that, we were, we were a lot of fun. Okay. This one. And then I'm just going to select these clips. Um, Remember the clips that we have already has the in and out point, so I can just simply tell it. And then just here. Or another way is on here, and then you can just select place on top. That's not there. It should be. And then you can just delete this. So again, because this one is linked, you just have to, again, press on Alt and then select. Yeah. So what there. Um, before yeah. that, we were we wrote a lot of songs. I think like it's been a bit of a, a brainchild for so long, and then it was we're like we're going to have to birth this thing, and we birthed it in January. Yeah. So I hope you guys were able to follow. We still have some people in the waiting room. If you weren't able to follow, um, you can see um, we have stack timelines available. So you just have to move on that timeline just in case you are um, missing the steps that we are doing. So, yeah. And then you can also add audio clips. So, for example, this clip here. Sorry. And then, Matthew, when you work in down, you want to learn training, you do you want to learn demo, you want to work in down. When you are a writer, you are working in the two and I should take. Yes. Um, do you have questions? Mm, okay. uh, yes, uh, I do have some question. So I can't actually see all these files which you have uh, mentioned, or like which you have been using in the files which I downloaded, in the folder which I downloaded? Supposedly, yes. You will be given a DRP file and all of the media files that we are using. So it's just one folder. So yeah, when you do it... Sorry. Sorry to cut you. I have actually loaded the same project, Hot Milk. Uh, this is the beginner, right? Hot Milk Beginner. Yes. Uh, but actually, uh, when I load the same uh, project, the BRP or uh, file, I cannot see anything loaded in this, on the timeline. Is it um, media offline or...? No, no clips in media pool. Okay, so but you link the you have um, imported the file in the venture resolve and then. Sorry, I have imported the project itself. Hot milk beginner, DRP. Okay. Mhm. Mm and then oh. after that, you open it on the media page. So Did you also download the folder wherein the clips yeah, are yeah. there? Yes, I have downloaded all the. But uh, somehow it still say, stays on the untitled project, which is like uh, when I have already opened. Hmm. So even after importing it, it still stays on the untitled project? Mm -hmm. Okay, wait. 
so we have we're now in the adding audio so you don't have this you're not saying this right no i can't see any like any clips loaded in the timeline okay because um supposedly on your project manager when you right click you import the project yes on file no i imported file import project going to file mm -hmm. import project i imported the project that is the same. Uh, that is the same. Yeah. Hotline okay. daughter. Okay. But this is hot, hot milk online trainer, but the ones which we have are actually uh, okay. hot milk beginner and hot milk uh, advanced. Okay. Um, I think Alper can help you with this so that yeah, we can go on with the um, they're session. They're both at the same. So, Abby, can you please continue? Then I can do with the yes. chat. Okay. And, yes. you know, uh, can you type it in the chat, please? So yes. Uh, sorry, yes, I have already chatted it, but uh, I think so. Nobody has seen it. Okay. So Alper will be assisting you. So. Um, okay. I d I didn't see that. Okay. Uh, so let's let's do that on the chat. Okay. Yeah. Please. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So um, go to your master folder on the audio bin. You can see this candy coated track, and then it would be on this one. So. Living this life. Okay, so we will put this clip after the first, we will put the audio clip after the first clip. So you just have to hear and then put there. So this one would be too loud. So what you can do is again you just have to right click so as you can see what i'm doing is that i'm importing the files and then i'm just doing the right click so select on the clip right click and then select on normalize your audio levels and then this one we just have to move this or increase this to negative 12. so that it will not be too loud. We can still hear because remember, guys, we have um, an interview portion. So, yeah. So this one would be our background music. So from here. So this one is my trainer. Okay. So we're here on adding audio. Yeah. Wait. Let me go back here. So I'm going to open the same project that you have, guys. So this one would be here, adding audio. So here, just have to put your audio clip. Select this one, put it here. Normalize your audio levels. Normalize. So you can see the difference between the clips here. And since we also have an interview, audio interview what we can do is we can do key framing of our audio so what here I can increase my audio so that would be it's here for me to look at this so you can change it to this one or this one so this one here no this one I'm just going to, so this is the start of my, okay. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, mm. I don't know, here, You just have to press Alt to add a keyframe. And then you can lower this. Okay. 
here. So we be together for so how? So we can still lower this one. Just under a year now. Um, in the public realm. Before yeah. that, we were we wrote. So you can adjust this or adjust your background music, um, depending on here. So this one. And then. On this clip here, we can adjust this. We can also lower this down. And we're in a bank on hot milk. So you can see this spike on this. What we can do is we can also the bank on hot milk here. So that we can Hot milk, so we can also lower it down. So you just have to press on Alt and then click, so that you can create a keyframe on your audio. Wait, let me remove this one. Yeah. Hot milk. So we've been together for how just, just under a year now. Um, In the public realm. Before yeah. that, we were we wrote a lot of songs. I think like it's been a bit of a, a brainchild for so long, and then it was like right, we're going to have to birth this thing. We birthed it. In Just a bit smaller. Okay. I'm, I'm Jim. And I. Okay. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to do trimming. So we're going to use the trim edit mode. So this one, you just have to press T, or you can select that using your mouse on the toolbar. <laughs> okay. So if you're on the trim mode, it will give you um, different options depending on where you're placing your cursor. So for example, this, I'm going to place it in between two clips. It will give me my slide. You can also have your slip and this one would be your roll. So you, what you can do is you can cut them. So if I want to move. Yeah. I'm, I'm Jim. So, see. so what we did is we're going to remove the part. I'm, I'm, we will start the clip on this part here. So it is time to move. I'm, I'm Jim. <laughs> and I'm Han. And we're in a bank on hot milk. And then we can also use this. So that we can see what I'm doing here. So I want to extend this clip. So I'm just going to extend the clip here. Public realm. Before that, we were we wrote a lot of songs. I think like it's been a bit of a a brain. Okay, let's add more. Okay. In child for so long. Okay. So we can also do that. And then we can also. Okay, let's make this. 
here. So here, if I'm going to play right, this, yeah. I want to remove this. So here. So you can see that if you are using your trim edit mode, it will give you um, two windows. So this would be the out point and the in point of the um, second clip. So there. So if I want to remove the blurry start of this clip, the 14 Glasgow rehearsal, then I just have to stretch it out using my using my roll. So this is roll, this is slip, and then this one is ripple, and then the other one would be, this one would be the slide. So this, yeah, this one is a bit long. You're right, we're going to have to bear this anyway. After birth, it's January birthday in January this year. Okay. And then this one. Because this little public realm. Before that, we were we wrote a lot of songs. So we can also. So here, so if I'm flipping my clip, it will give me this. So this would be public realm. I think like it's been a bit of a, a brainchild for so long, and then it was like right, we're gonna have to birth this thing. So that is your dream edit mode. So this one, at least um, you don't have to move from one clip, sorry, from one clip. You just have to use your trim edit mode to be able to um, trim or roll your clips. And then it, it would give you the four windows. So it, you can see the in and out points of the clips that are being affected once you do your edit. So let's use again this clip here, this Glasgow rehearsal. So we are going to retime the clip that we have. So you just have to right click again. So in DaVinci Resolve, you have your contextual menu. So every time you do your right click, it will give you options of what you can do on that specific area in DaVinci Resolve. So for example, this, you just have to select on retime control. And then what we can do is we can also um, time control, and then we can reverse the segment. Wow. I think like it. So here, and then we can always add speed point here. So long, and we have here. Let's add another speed point. So you can play around this um, option. So here, let's um, change the speed, for example, to 150. Also, on this speed point here, we can change this to. 150 and then we can just um, adjust the clip so that we can see um, 
much longer. Um, in the public realm, I think like it's been a bit of a. a And then we can change the speed here to in the public realm. I think like it's been a bit of a, a brainchild is so so you can use that. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Can you yeah. apply this uh, order on uh, another clip? Um. Sorry. Can you apply this uh, order? On another clip, that's movement and uh, clip. Um, can you type that on the chat box? Because I didn't get the last part. Yeah, can you type all the questions to the chat box? Because I can answer the questions. I, I should continue. I'm here to answer all the questions. So we are going to select this clip here. So this clip, if you're going to select the number six Tom, um, you can see the frame here. So let's smoke this. You can see that this one here. So you just have to use your inspector and then you can zoom in and then you can also change this position yeah. so when you play this okay and then you can also use this stabilization so you just have to select on this clip and select on stabilize so DaVinci Resolve will analyze the clip and it will stabilize your shot here. So also this clip here, we can also do the same thing. So you just have to use your different parameters available on your inspector. So you just have to change. Okay. So you can move there. Just a box I'm living this life. Okay. So it's here under your inspector. So you can zoom. You also have your stabilization. And then, yeah. So you, there, are, there are different options and different parameters that you can play around um, to add more aesthetics or if you want to add, um, or if you want to change something with the clip inside your timeline, on your timeline. So we've been together for about just under a year now. Um, In the public realm, I think like it's been a bit of a, a brainchild for so long, and then it was like right, we're going to have to birth this thing. We birthed it in January this year. Since then. 
So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to add effects. So in the Vinci Resolve, aside from the color page, you can also add different um, effects in the edit page itself. So if you're going to open your effects library, you can see here on your toolbox, you have video transition, audio transition, your titles, generators. You also have your effects and open effects. So if you think you're, that what's available in DaVinci Resolve is still not enough, you can always download Resolve effects or open effects, and then you just have to install that on your um, system, and then you can use that. So for here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an adjustment clip. So what the adjustment clip will do is that you just have to apply all of your um, effects on this and whatever is below the adjustment clip will be affected. So you don't have to apply the adjustments or your, or your effects to all of the clips. You just have to do it here on your adjustment clip. And then we just have to select on um, clip um, audio transform. So this one, color space transform. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump here. So you can see in the inspector you have your video and you have your open effects. So if you, on the open effects tab, you just have to select this and then it would give you a drop down menu and then you can select here Blackmagic Design Pocket 4K Film Gen 4. So you can see the difference. So it's being applied on all three clips. One, two, three. So this one here. So if I'm going to select here open effects and then just remove this one it will be adjusted so here open effects um, okay. wait I'm just going to remove this Wait, what happened? And then you just have to use the input color space, which is the what I've told you. Wait, let me remove this. So something happened. So just one again. So you just have to select adjustment clip. Mm. under the effects so here and then you just have to extend that so here select this and then here your color space transform resolve effects so this one it's under your resolve effects color space transform and then you just apply that directly so from your filters you just have to drag and drop that on your adjustment clip and then on your inspector open effects in the timeline you use this one in your timeline you just have to use the black magic design pocket 4k film gen same with your input gamma And then on your timeline, you just used Rec 709. Here. 
So if I'm going to move this from here. Ball through, pouring, six, left runner, three fighters. So you can play around with this. So you just have to take note that when you're applying something and then you want to modify the parameters for that, you just have to go to your inspector and then you can change this one. So you have your, here your tone mapping. So it depends on the result effects that you're using or the effects that you're using. So it would give you what's available on that where that you, that you can edit or you Ball through, pouring, six, left runner, three fighters. So that's one way. Do you have any questions on this? I'm going to give you time so um, you can play around with this and then um, because the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to move to the color page. So I want you guys to be able to check this um, filters that we have applied on the clips. Okay, yeah, so um, here, um, what we did, um, we did the color space transform. So you can see from here that we have applied the color space for REC 709. You just have to take note that the files that we are using, for example, this one, um, wait, where is that? here. So this clips here, what we have is the bureau. So if you're going to look at the clips, this tray clips that we have added on the last part, um, we have applied this color space transform. That's why the only change or the only effect that we have applied is for it to color, for the color of the clips to change. So if I'm going to remove this, it would be just flat. So if I'm going to apply it again, it would give you a much, um, the image would not be flat or it would give you more color. So for example, this clip, so from there to there. So in DaVinci Resolve, there are different um, resolve effects that you can use on the edit page, although some of the effects are only available on the color page. So. Okay, so we're going to move now to the color page. So this is DaVinci Resolve's color page. So basically in the color page, the clips are being um, 
the clips shown here is the same how it is being organized or placed on your timeline. So when you move to color, you just have to, so this is your first clip and then, yeah. And then you can just close the timeline here and then you have your clip. So in DaVinci Resolve, we are working through nodes. So this one is much, is more visual compared to layers. And then you can also see what are the adjustments or the changes um, that you have applied on the clip. So here, you have your gallery, you have your LUTs or your LUTs. So these LUTs are already pre-installed. You have here your media pool and then you have your timeline. You can always close that. So here you have your nodes and then you also have your open effects. Um, as you can see, based on the different pages in Resolve, the layout differs, but you still have your master folder and you have your open effects. So here. Some of the open effects, if you are using the free version, it would not be available, although you can apply that, but it would be um, watermarked. But you can still check what it can do for you. So here are your open effects. And then you also have your light box. So the light box can help you, for example, if you are um, working on a lot of clips, you can just um, check which clips are ungraded or which clips have been graded already. So it's much easier for you to select or check the clips that you want to copy or if you want to create a still from it. Here. Okay, so we're going to use this clip and then you also have your scope. So if you don't have a color critical monitor, you can always use your scopes um, to be able to work on your here. And then you can always make this bigger. So you have your parade, your waveform, your histogram, and your vector scope. So here you have a strip of another toolbar. So you have your camera raw. So if you are working on raw files, cine cinema DNG files, black magic raw files, you can use that to adjust your ISO or your exposure if you want to change, because you just have to select here and then project and then you clip. So you can adjust the color temperature. So it would give you um, different um, options too modify and then you also have your color match you have your color wheels so right now what I have is the DaVinci Resolve advanced panel so this panel is basically the whole of the color page if you have seen the DaVinci Resolve mini panel um, it would be focusing on this part on this tab here if you have the micro panel, then it would be on this part. These three wheels here and some of the buttons available on this. So you have your primary wheels, you have your primary bars, and you even have your lug. So it depends on how you want to utilize the DaVinci Resolve color page. Um, the good thing about color grading and color correction is that it really doesn't have a specific rule of what you are going to do or what you can do or what you want to do about that. Not unless your um, producer or the client gave you specific instructions of how they want their video or their project to look like. But eventually, if, as long as you practice and then eventually you'll be familiar with the tools and then you know how to manipulate the tools already, then it would be much easier for you to create your own style. So basically, um, the good colorists that we know, the popular ones, the ones in the Hollywood and even in Bollywood, they have their own um, look and feel. So eventually, you'll be developing your own. So what you have to do right now, since this is the beginner session, you just have to be familiar with the tools and what it can do for you.
So you just have to make the software um, work. You have to make the software software works for you, work for you, not the other way around. So here um, we'll be using this um, clip here. So this is Hana. So what we can do is we're just going to adjust the lip. If you don't have the panel with you, what you can do, you can see here, this is the master wheel. So you can just adjust this. Wait, I'm going to show you my your scopes here. And then we can adjust the highlights. So we can be here. Okay, wait. Um, hmm. wait. Wait, guys. I'm just going to let our. Mm -hmm. I cannot find our. Yeah. So there. So you can adjust this. Oops, sorry. And then you can see these wheels here. Sometimes this mouse is acting up. So you can see these wheels here. These are your reset button. So when you click this one, it will automatically reset. When you right click on your node, there's an option to delete node or change your node or yeah. So every time you right click, there's a contextual menu of what you can do. You can also have your add serial node, add outside node. So basically this is just an editing session. So I'm just giving you a run through of the different pages in DaVinci Resolve. So if you're going to look at the color page, there's a lot of tools that you can use. And actually when it comes to, even for nodes, if you're going to nodes here there are different nodes that you can also use for your project but yeah we're not going to discuss that but it's interesting to know this stuff because um it will really help you eventually if you're going to do your color correction and your color grading to be able to isolate specific parts of your image so here let's do it again so i'm just going to use my um So I'm just going to adjust. So from here to here. So you can see the adjustment that I have created on the waveform. So the waveform would be on this part. Okay. And then I'm just going to add another node. So adding another node would be out S. Yeah, out S. So if you have the panel... Yeah, you can just simply click on the buttons. But yeah, for those who are using your mouse and your keyboard, you just have to select Alt S and then it will create another node for you. So what I'm going to do is in the gamma, I'm going to adjust or add more orange. So this one, the gamma will affect your skin tone. Not as, yeah. So this one is your gamma. See, so yeah. yeah. So we're adding more life to her skin tone. And then another node. We can use our qualifier, and then we'll be selecting the background. So if I'm just going to close this, and this, oops, this one. 
here. So you can adjust this one, the U here. So you can either increase the width so that the selection of the colors will be um, wider. And then you can also change here. So you can see um, it's giving me here. So let's try to play around on this part here. And then we can also increase the width here. And then you can also use this, the selection range. So for example, if I'm going to use this um, picker here with minus sign, so it will just remove that. So yeah. And then you can just um, clean black. Wait, center, I'm going to be big. Okay, yeah. Green, black, and then green, white. Okay. And then here we can change the color. So in the U, you can change this one and make it pink. So yeah, so they like the color pink here. So we can make it pink. And then you can also add your saturation. So you can see the tiny, the buttons here below. So you just have to adjust that. So you can increase the saturation and then the you also. Have. So there. Or let's remove this mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. oops what? So you can change the color of your background. Okay. And then you can add an outside node. So this one. Or you can just press out O. If you have your panel, you can just point because it will give you um, the menu option for that. So you just have to select on outside node. And then you can also see that some of the, um, pay, um, some parts of her face is being affected. So what you can do is you can, wait. you can track this. Wait, let's add contrast to her face. So, here. So you can add more contrast to her. So you also have your curves. Yeah. Okay. So there are also other options. For example, sorry, this um, clip here from clip number two to clip number eight. So basically, um, so this is the original clip that we have for Hannah. So when we did some of our grading, we added contrast, we changed the background. And then we know that this clips here from clip number two to clip number eight have the same ambience. What you can do is you can color grade them again one by one, um, like um, doing the same process that we did for Hannah's clip. But much e the much easier way would be selecting your clips. So you just have to select all of your clips, and then using your mouse. So you should have a mouse with a um, button. I think this is the bo the scroll button in the middle. So you just have to select here and then all of it will be applied directly on the clip so that's one way of applying 
that's one way of applying your um, the color effect that you have created but you just have to you know as you can see we have something here because what we did on her skin tone we weren't able to do that so that's one way so you always wait um, here on the gallery or what you can also do is you can select here or you can grab your still so if you have created the look that you want to apply on your other clips you just have to select that so for example this one I'm going to call her, I'm going to reset this and then I just have to apply this so it will also be applied on the clip so that's another way of doing that so this is not really the detailed um, color grading part or the color page part so yeah and then we have to move to our cut page I think some of you guys are um, checking the cut page here so let's open this timeline so the cut page so currently the venture resolve has um, two editing environments um, one is the cut page and the second one is what we have um, used earlier which is the edit page so the cut page is basically for your um, projects that needs to be delivered quickly so this is um, meant for fast editing so for example you are doing your vlogs or if you have um, advertise short advertisements that you want to upload in the internet so you can also use the cut page um, the good thing with DaVinci Resolve is you don't have to just use the cut page or just use the edit page you can actually use both of them so the cut page um, has two timelines available so you have your upper timeline which is here and this one the lower timeline is a much more detailed timeline so this one is where you can actually see something that we have on the edit page as well so here so what we're going to do here so again you have your viewer and then you already have your in and out points so if you're going to here it will show that it already has your in and out points so you just have to drag and drop them on your timeline we are at the deaf institute in manchester supporting a little band called okay. And then you can select clip number two and then we are can select source override so because it is meant for fast editing um, the cut page has the ability to give you um, we are at the deaf Institute in Manchester supporting a little band called like a different angle when you click on source override so this one is also in Manchester supporting a little band called and then we can also do syncing of clips so I'm going to select clip number three and click num clip number four and then you can see this icon here which has, says sync clips so I'm just going to select that and then I'm going to go here because I want to sync them by my audio you have also have other options like sync it through your in point or your out point so this one is by audio so I'm just going to click on sync so the two clips will be synced so I'm just going to save this and then it will give me this 
icon here. So it says that these two clips are already synced and then I can access that on my sync bin. And then I can just select this. And then I can just add that on my timeline. Or if I want to create another angle, I just have to select this one and then do the same thing. So this one, so it would be much easier for us to add um, different angles on the project that we are creating. Okay. So let's here and then open my sync bin. I can add um but oh wait to repair for a lot here and then I'm just going to add the click here. Biz, we all have a bit of all have a bit of a yeah. A couple of bears. A couple of bears. A couple of bears. We all have a bit of a get in the moment kind of thing, don't we? Yeah, get speaker kind of out, get, get some songs on. Yeah, get some songs out, hyped up. Mm -hmm. Just kind of like I can in and then select on that number two and then move from here. So we are adding different I, angles I on the say So another feature of um, the cut page is the source tape. So this one. So let's move to your master folder. Let's move to the cut page on your cutaways. So here, you just have to select on source tape, and it will give you this one. So it's here. Wait, that. Yep. Okay. So what you can do is you can also put your in and out points from here. Sorry. Wait, let me check this. And then you just have to drag and drop them on your timeline. So it will give you. So, yeah. So you just have to select on source tape. Yeah. And then here, you can also select here. And then you can drag and drop them on the timeline. So, yeah. Oh, on stage in a very condensed amount of time. So it's like getting ready for that out of the main. So we can add the clip here. Okay, so it's good. So clip here. And then this one, you can tell it from here. So, so you can add different clips. So, yeah. So basically, all of the clips that are available on the cutaways would be here, just like one clip, but it would give you this one. So this would be the cut. So one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten. So we have ten clips available on our cutaway. So we have ten clips here. So instead of checking your clips one by one and then adding, adding it on your timeline, you can use the source tape. It would be much easier for you 
to just scrub and then select the clip. And then from here, what you can do, you can select here and then select on So we have it here now, okay, and then we can select also this. So you just have to put here and then insert. So there, we have here. Yeah. Yeah. So also on the cut page, if you're going to use your, um, your upper timeline, you can easily move the clips you can easily swap the clips. So you can easily swap the clips or move the clips using your upper timeline. Okay. So now, for example, we have created this project using our cut page. So it's much easier for you to build your rough cuts on the edit on the cut page if you're going to move to your edit page it would be translated like this so you can either continue editing on the cut page or on the ed or on the cut page or on the edit page so it depends on what you want to do okay and then we have so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my grading timeline. Sorry, this one, the mouse is, okay. So I'm going to open the grading timeline. See. So here, and then on my master folder, you can see here timelines, and then you can select this cut complete timeline, and then you can drop that at the end of your grading timeline, and then you can right click again, and then select on decompose in place. So now what we have in the cut page so this is um a night out but on stage in a very condensed amount of time so it's like getting ready for the night out with your mates and like okay so we have added one timeline to another timeline and then we just have selected decompose in place and then we can insert um where's that additional clips this band intro at the beginning of our clip so just like what I have shown you, you can select this one, the insert clip, or you can just um, use the edit overlay. Or yeah, so you just have to select here and then insert. So there. Okay. And then in between your grading timeline, and the cut page complete timeline. If you can see this music video and grade um, clip, you can also insert it in between there. So here. Almost be truer than life in a way. Okay, so this one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my clip here and then I'm just going to adjust it here. We are okay. And then we can also now adjust the audio because they started um, here. So we can, from this side, 
ignore this and then out quick and then just have to make two key frames to be able to lower the volume for this. We are out. We still make it. You definitely here in Manchester for a little Okay. We'll see what it is to hold, but I can understand if you're in Manchester, you can see if you're in a flight in Manchester on a rainy day, so let's move on. Ready for the next phase? Yes, we are. Yep. So, what so we have um, this project we have created. And then we can now move to the deliver page. So on the deliver page, it would give you different options of where you want to deliver your project. Would it be a YouTube or a Vimeo? Or if you want to um, return it back to Final Cut, so you can use your XML file. And then you also have your Premiere, so here. Or you can just change your um, file name. And then this one, you can change here the format. So DaVinci Resolve will give you different options of how you would want to deliver your project. And then you just have to add to render queue and then start rendering. So basically, um, that's a two hour session for the beginners in when it comes to editing in DaVinci Resolve. Also, again, in the cut page, there's an option here for quick export. So remember when I explained to you a while ago that the Venture Resolve cut page is meant for um, fast editing and quick delivery. So you have an option here, quick export, and then when you select, for example, YouTube, it will give you your um, sign-in account, and then you can just directly save, upload that to YouTube. So there. So do you have like any questions? Um, we can start. Um, discussing that now. Um, yep. Yeah. I hope the discussion is clear. Um, I'm going to write my email on the um, chat box so that if you have any questions or if you want to try the project that we have created today and then you're having an issue, um, feel free to get in touch. So me and my colleague Alper, he's based on Turkey. He's also a DaVinci of certified trainer. So he can also assist you. He also added the email address in the chat box. So yeah. So if you have any questions, I think this is the perfect time so that we can address anything from your side. Yeah, we all, we have almost 15 minutes to answer the questions by the way taking care yeah. before all the information that you have uh was great and i think it is the perfect time to ask the questions right yes this is it yeah actually the resolve is trying to uh gather all the artists, all the visual effects artists, editors, colorists, and audio engineers together in one software. It is two hours is good, good to explain everything, but uh, I think the advanced session is much more into uh, advanced things, like uh, 
like its name, uh, we're going to talk more about fusion stuff. We have some examples, exercises, which can help you to improve your abilities on notes, note sessions, uh, which allows you to uh, do your own compositings like Hollywood do in their movies. And for a short period of time, for two hours, it is uh, such information that helps ourselves to get into much more into result and get familiar with the software, with the analysis itself. And yeah, we're still here. And if you have any further questions, then uh, my and Abby's email is there in the chat box. And you can have it. And if you, if anything pops onto your mind, and then you can ask later. Um, by email. Yeah. Yes. And I hope you guys will also be using the Venture Resolve for editing, not just for color grading. So like what I explained a while ago. So I think the workflow when it comes to any editing software would be just the same. So you just have to familiarize yourselves with the tools available inside the Venture Resolve. And I think you'd be working on your projects using this software. Yeah, the good thing about uh, using Resolve, uh, you have seen the edit interface, so you don't need to import and make it online anything, because in the next session we're going to talk about that, but uh, you don't need to re-edit your timeline again, so Resolve can basically go into color page and go back to edit page in the meantime if you have uh, a good machine, good PC, then you can do your own, uh, even your own uh, compost things on motion graphics and 3D uh, animation and go back to your edit again so you can uh, export it from a one solid uh, software. That's what we do in Turkey, by the way, for the Turkish movies and all the, like the Netflix movies and we're helping them to achieve their look in a time, short period of time, because movies don't have much time to spend on conforming, like uh, edit again, then go to color. If you don't like anything, you need to go back to edit again to just to uh, do everything um, from the scratch, but resolve, you don't need that. You just open your project and do your own work. Yeah. That's a good thing about Resolve. So thank you too, by the way, to everyone who is intended. Uh, yeah. I think we can... Uh, Yeah, we can have a break. We can finish it. I think no more question is coming. Well, thank you again for joining the sessions. The sessions will be continuing, uh, not for today. It will eventually go for go with uh, another uh, uh, sessions, like more deeply into fusion, more deeply into color page, and. We're going to see that in the next days, next months. And thank you again and see you soon. Bye.